Hey, what's up? This is Caleb Ward, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this 3D DNA strand using only the free tools available in After Effects. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new composition. So I'm going to go to composition, new composition. Uh, we'll make sure it's 1080p, 24 frames per second, 10 seconds long, and I'm going to call this DNA and hit OK. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new solid. And what we're going to do here is create the uh, individual strand for a single piece of DNA. And I'll just call this strand and hit OK. And I'm going to select our rectangle tool here. And I'm just going to kind of go to about halfway here. And I'll use our proportional grid to, to tell us what the right size is. And that looks good right about there. And I'm going to create another mask with our strand layer selected here. And I'm going to just kind of create this wacky elliptical rectangle hybrid shape here. And I'm going to set the transfer mode or the mask mode to intersect. And basically what this is going to do is anytime the mask overlap, you can see the layer underneath and anytime they don't overlap, it's completely see through. So I'm going to set a keyframe for the mask path at zero and I'm going to move forward to about three seconds and we'll move the mask path for this wacky little shape here uh, to the end right here. And right now it's going to grow on in a linear fashion and it looks a little strange. So what I'm going to do is select one of the keyframes, hit the graph editor, and we're going to make this kind of hill shape. So what this is going to do is speed up the mask in the beginning and it's going to smooth it out there towards the end. So if we play it back, you can see it grows on and smooths out. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is set the strand to 3D and I'm going to duplicate it once and I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis, we'll say uh, about 45 degrees. And I'm going to duplicate it again and do the same thing. We'll do uh, 90 degrees this time. And duplicate it one more time and we'll do 135. So this kind of created a fake tube effect. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and select all of these and hit Shift Command C to pre-compose. And we'll just call this a single strand and hit OK. And I'm going to make sure that this continuous rasterize button selected and 3D. And basically what this did is it uh, preserved all the 3D properties for the layers inside. Uh, so now if I go to layer, new camera and hit OK, we can uh, just kind of see that there's this kind of fake 3D effect going on. And that's going to look really good whenever we are creating our 3D DNA here in a few minutes. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the single strand. And under scale here, I'm going to deselect the, uh, the chain link here and hit negative 100. And that just kind of duplicated that strand over there. And I'm going to add in a fill effect. And we'll make this one kind of dark blue and hit OK. So now we can see we have our DNA that kind of grows on. And now we want to create the balls that go at the end of the DNA. So I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid. And we can make it blue. That's perfectly fine. And I'm going to select our Ellipse tool here and create just a, a ball about that size. And I'm going to scrub over to three seconds and we'll set our uh, scale. So I hit the S key to 100 there. And I'm going to go to the very beginning and do zero. So now it kind of grows up over the course of three seconds. And just like before, I'm going to select the keyframe, go to the mask or the uh, graph editor and I'm going to kind of create this hill. And it's going to basically speed up and smooth out there towards the end. Cool. So I'm going to move this over here. Actually, I'm going to move it over here because I'm going to have dark blue on light blue and then light blue on dark blue. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to 3D and I'm going to duplicate this layer. And we'll rotate it along the x-axis 45 degrees, just like before. I'm going to duplicate it one more time, and we'll do 90. And duplicate it one more time and do 135. And then since we want the ball to be a little more 3D, I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom one here. And we're going to rotate it along the y-axis in a similar fashion. So I'm going to do uh, 45 degrees. 
and I'm going to duplicate it one more time and we'll do 90 degrees and duplicate it one more time and do 135 and that's all along the y-axis. So now what we can do is select all of our loose solids here and I'm going to hit shift command C and we'll call this ball and hit OK. And so what we can do just like before hit the continuous rasterize button and then the 3D uh, checkbox here and so we have this 3D uh, sphere here and it's a simulated sphere and so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it and hit P for position and I'm going to move it to the end of the DNA strand over here and apply a fill effect to this ball. And we'll go ahead and just sample this dark blue. Cool, so now if we just look at our composition here, we can see we have DNA strands that grow on. And uh, if we pan around in 3D space, we can see that it kind of looks like it's the simulated 3D. It looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this camera because it's unnecessary for our final composition. And I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these little individual layers and I'm going to hit shift command C to pre-compose and we'll call this DNA strand and hit OK. So the first thing we got to do is hit the continuous rasterize button and hit 3D. So now we have all the 3D properties from all the 3D layers underneath. All right, so now comes the fun part. We're actually going to have After Effects create our 3D DNA effect uh, automatically so we don't actually have to do it by hand and the way we're gonna do that is by creating just a few quick expressions so I'm gonna go ahead and select our DNA strand and hit P for position and hold down option and hit the stopwatch and we're actually gonna create an array so to do that I'm gonna do an open bracket and I'm gonna type in value open bracket zero close bracket so before we get going any further, uh, an array basically is a bucket that holds multiple values. So in the case of our position here, we have three values. We have the X position, the Y position, and the Z position. So by saying value zero with the brackets here, we're basically saying the value of the very first uh, parameter or the X position is just gonna be whatever the value is. And in our case here, it's 960. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, type in index times 200. And so what this is telling After Effects is whatever layer number, so this right now it's 1, multiply that by 200. And because we're in the Y parameter or the Y position, it's basically going to be a Y value of 200. And remember, Y goes up and down. So uh, if we were to duplicate this layer again, it would go to 400 because it would be 2 times 200 and so on and so forth. And then the last parameter here, we're going to type in value, open parentheses, two, close parentheses, and not parentheses, bracket, and we're going to do another close bracket. And basically this just says that the Z position is going to be zero, and it's always going to remain zero. And that's exactly what we want. And I'm going to do a semicolon and click away. Okay, cool. So to get us all on the same page, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this DNA strand just so, to show you our expression in action. So you can see that it's duplicating it and kind of moving it downwards. But DNA also spins. It's not a flat ladder like this. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these guys. So what I'm going to do is hit R and I'm going to hold down option and hit the stopwatch for the Y rotation. And I'm just going to type in index times 20 and then semicolon. And so what this is going to do for each layer, it's going to take the value of the layer number. So in this instance, it's one and it's going to multiply it by 20. So our first layer has a Y rotation of 20. And if we duplicate it, the next one has a Y rotation of 40 and so on and so forth. So we're just going to go ahead and duplicate this, let's say uh, 40 or 20 times. It doesn't really matter. Just whatever is appropriate for your composition. So I'm just going to go ahead and just keep duplicating until I feel like we have just a maybe a good amount here. So we have uh, 21 layers. We'll do an even 20. So we have 20 DNA layers. And what I'm going to do is go to layer new camera to create a new camera and We'll create a 50 millimeter camera and hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and track back in the Z space. 
right about there. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here so we can get a better view and let me kill the proportional grid here. And we can go in and kind of track downwards. So we can see that we have this 3D DNA effect and I'll zoom out a little bit here. Cool. So what we're going to do is keyframe some of the rotation of the camera because I want it basically to just kind of pan around the DNA as it grows. And so if we kind of like move or play head forward, we can see that we have all these DNA strands that grow, but it really will get its full effect if the camera is kind of rotating in 3D space. So I'm going to select this camera here and I'm going to set some keyframes for its point of interest, position, and orientation. And I'm going to move forward, let's say about five seconds. And we'll do a lot. We'll, we'll kind of orbit around here. Maybe we can kind of orbit to right about there. And perhaps we want to set a keyframe for the Z rotation. And we can kind of maybe like rotate the Z to maybe right about there. And then maybe at the very beginning, it's maybe less. Okay, so I'm going to play this back. Okay, cool. So you can see that we have this cool 3D DNA effect going on, but the thing that really is going to set it over the top is if we kind of offset uh, the DNA so it kind of grows from the top to the bottom. And so what I'm going to do is just go in by hand, and there's a few uh, scripts out there that can do this automatically, but it's honestly just faster if you just kind of go in by hand here, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And I'm just going to offset each individual DNA layer by one frame. And this is just going to take just a few seconds, but the end result is going to be so worth it. I'm just going to keep pushing it back here. And excellent. So let's go ahead and preview this. Excellent. So this is looking fantastic. And I'm going to go in and create a background layer real quick. So uh, we'll just call this BG for background and we'll make it white and hit OK. All right. So now it's time to add in some quick stylization. So I'm just going to go to layer new adjustment layer and we're going to apply a glow effect. And we're going to kind of turn this up just a little bit turn up the radius a little bit and maybe turn down the threshold just a little cool maybe something about there maybe you can turn down the radius to about 15 cool so that's looking really cool and I'm gonna apply a vector blur effect and we can turn it up just a little bit maybe to about seven and this is starting to be a lot for our computer, but you can see that this kind of created this cool simulated uh, kind of glassy look, and that's exactly what we want for our effect. And the last thing I want to do is hit Command Y to create a new solid, and we're going to call this a gradient layer. Hit OK, and I'm going to apply a gradient ramp. And so I'm just going to type in ramp and drag it over. And what we're gonna do for the start color is maybe do something a little bit like magenta. And for the end color, we can do maybe a little bit deeper blue. And we can kind of offset the colors to where they're kind of diagonal here. And I'm gonna set the transfer mode to add. Cool. So it kind of created this uh, crazy gradient structure here. And uh, you can kind of see that maybe it's a little too bright. So we can cut down on the brightness here, maybe to about, it's at like 40% here. So 40% and let's go ahead and preview what we got. Okay, cool. This looks great. So you can see that if you wanted to play around with colors or um, even some of the other effects and after effects, like perhaps the CC glass effect might be able to create something cool. Uh, really, the sky's the limit. But the cool takeaway from this is 
Uh, if you are to pre-compose a layer, you can just hit the continuous rasterize and then 3D, and it will preserve all the 3D layer properties underneath, but allow you to kind of duplicate your layers and uh, just kind of keep your projects more organized. And this is kind of a newer technique that I've learned, and I hope that you found it super helpful. If you want to download a free project file for this DNA effect, you can do so by going to my website, VFX City. Uh, that's VFX.city. And while you're there, go check out some of the other cool tutorials, and you can also download project files for those as well. Again, this has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.